Today we're going to be making a case for the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. This is a new and more powerful version of the original Pi Zero W and has a quad core 64 bit Broadcom BCM 2710A1 chip, which is similar to the original Pi 3 but with a few tweaks. This new and more powerful board is a significant improvement over the original Pi Zero, but it also uses more power and produces more heat. So we're going to design a case which also provides some additional cooling to the CPU. The original Pi Zero and this Pi Zero 2 have the same footprint and form factor, so you can use this case for either version. To complete the case, we're going to need a 40mm 5V fan, a heatsink for the CPU, some header pins, and then some M2.5 and M3 button head screws. To start, I need to add the header pins to my Pi Zero 2 to power the cooling fan. These will also be accessible through the front of the case to add displays, sensors, or other peripherals. I'm going to design the case in Fusion 360. I'll start by creating a basic model of the Pi Zero and then design the case around it. I decided on a basic rectangular design with the fan blowing across the Pi and out of a vented panel on the other side. I added a large acrylic window to the front so that the Pi is visible and this will also provide access to the GPIO pins. The Pi and main acrylic panel are secured with M2.5 screws and the fan and vented side cover are held in place with some M3 screws. We can then export the main body of the case for 3D printing and open it up in Cura to slice it. I've designed the case with a 1.2mm wall thickness, which is perfect for three layers with a 0.4mm nozzle, and I've added supports for the cutout on the front and the mounting points on the inside. I'm going to add a brim around the bottom of the print so that there's a bit more contact area with the build plate. I then printed the case out on my Ender 3 in black PLA. This print took about five hours. Now we just need to remove the brim and support material from the print and we can then start installing the components. I'm going to start by installing the Pi in the case using some M2.5 by 6mm screws into the 3D printed standoffs. These standoffs also provide some room underneath the Pi for airflow. The Pi's ports are all accessible through the back of the case. Next let's add the heatsink to the CPU. I'm just using a small aluminium heatsink which should be more than enough with a 40mm fan. There is quite a bit of room in the case though, so you can try a different heatsink design if you'd like. The one I'm using just has a peel and stick backing. Before adding the fan, we need to install the SD card with our operating system on it. The one I'm using is the one that came with the Pi Zero 2 a few months back. So I'm going to assume that it's got the older Raspberry Pi OS Buster rather than Bullseye on it, but this can be upgraded at a later stage if need be. I'm going to be using a clear RGB fan. You can also use a black one if you don't want any lights on your case. Either way, make sure that the power cable comes out the back of the fan and not off to the side. You might need to pull the cable out of these little retaining clips on the side like I've done. I originally planned on using some M3 by 8mm screws for both the fan and the opposite side panel, but they don't protrude all the way through the fan, so I'll need to use some M3 by 12mm screws on this side, and I'll use M3 by 8mm screws on the opposite side. When you position the fan, make sure that the cable is in the top corner closest to the GPI opens. Now we can plug the fan into the pins. Most of these 5V fans can run on either 5V, which are the two pins right at the front shown here, 
or 3.3 volts, which is the pin on the end on the back row. I'm going to use 3.3 volts as the fan is then a bit quieter as it turns slower. Now that we've got the fan hooked up, we can start making our acrylic panels. I drew these panels up in Inkscape. The front cover has a small screw hole on each end and some notches on the sides to indicate where it should be bent. The ventilation cover has the same form factor and mounting holes as the 40mm fan, and I've added some hexagon ventilation holes which are similar to my other case designs. I then cut these out on my laser cutter from 2mm clear acrylic. As mentioned earlier, we'll be mounting the ventilation cover with 4 m 3 by 8 mm screws and the main cover with 2 m 25 by 6 mm screws. The last thing we need to do before we mount the main cover is to bend it 90 degrees to follow the shape of the case. We first need to peel off the protective film and we can then use a heating tool to soften the acrylic along the bend line. I know this looks a lot like a hair straightener but it's actually made to bend small sections of acrylic sheets and you can buy them online for a few dollars. I'll leave a link to one in the video description. With the acrylic soft, I'm going to use a second print to bend the acrylic to get a nice clean line. This is not entirely necessary, you can use the case that you've already got. I just want to support the whole bend while it's hardening. Now we just need to add two screws to hold it in place. With that done, the case is now complete, so let's boot up the pie and see how it looks. I quite like the look of the RGB LEDs on the fan. This makes for a really neat computer for a number of projects. I've been running Powerhole on a Pi Zero W for a bit over a year now, and that's worked really well. I've also used one as a security camera using Motion iOS. Let me know what you use yours for in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.